Too many MCs gave us the guidance mm. that made me great. I feel like it's only right that we do the same shit for the next generation of motherfuckers, especially if they dope. Right. And I'm a fan of a lot of these new artists. And I want to work with them because they still inspiring me to want to go in the studio and stay razor blade sharp with my shit when I got to do my shit. D-D-D-I-Y. So this next story right here is from Buster Rhymes, DIYers. Buster Rhymes is talking about as he kind of gets up there in age as an artist, the responsibility that he feels as being the OG for a lot of younger artists and why he chose to even embrace them on his new album. But the thing that really stood out to me is you've made the decision to put people on this album who are young, up and coming, fresher artists who you haven't really worked with previously. And you've worked with bloody everybody, everybody, but you chose to give these younger artists the platform for some reason. Two reasons. The first reason is I'm never gonna listen to the narrative of this thing where I would hear it a little more regularly than I actually choose to hear it. I actually don't ever want to hear it. But it's this bullshit about how the elder statesmen or the older MCs don't really respect what the new guys is doing. Mm. That shit is bullshit. At least speaking for myself and the, the type of artists that I surround myself with, we don't feel like that. and We don't move like that. We encourage that shit because when we was young artists, we wanted the big dudes to put their arms around us and give us game, teach us shit so we could be better, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Chuck D gave me my name. Big Daddy Kane used to let me come to his crib. I did not, 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 not me, by the way. No, yeah, not, not that Chuck <laughs> D. I didn't know Chuck D gave him his name. I didn't know that either. And ask questions. He put me on his albums. He used to help me learn, let me learn. Bring me the shows that he was performing at. De La Soul, they did the same shit for us. Like, too many MCs gave us the guidance mm. that made me great. I feel like it's only right that we do the same shit for the next generation of motherfuckers, especially if they dope. Right. And I'm a fan of a lot of these new artists. And I want to work with them because they still inspiring me to want to go in the studio and stay razor blade sharp with my shit when I got to do my shit. Hold on. We got to gotta, gotta highlight that. We got to highlight that. That's especially now. And I really wonder what you think of this. I know you see a lot of the narratives around the too old to rap campaign. It just preaches ageism to me. It's like, to me, it doesn't make sense. Being somebody who's pro encouragement, I feel like there's room for everybody to eat, yeah. especially with technology being the way it is and in different ways to be able to make money and just do your art. They never say that about Stevie Wonder. They never say that about any. It, it's only hip hop that they do this with. Right. I don't like that narrative. I don't like when people say, oh, you're too old to do anything. Like, right. And maybe that's because I'm getting older and I'm understanding like, yo, I still have the, the hunger and the desire to drive to do all this. Like, right. I got sciatic pain. Bro. I, I got some things. Oh, it hurt. I, it hurt. Oh, it hurt. Oh, hey. I need a nap. <laughs> I'm going to get my nap off. There's a lot of motherfuckers walking around with their hairstyles like how I used to wear it with my dress. There's no a lot facts. of motherfuckers that dress and they throw their heavy jewelry on that wow. do it the way I used to do it and still do it. I just ain't got the dreads no more, but all that other shit, we still- Y'all ain't got my hairline no more, so. <laughs> it's a rap, it's a rap. Doing it. But... How the hell you still got braids right hey, now, man, bro? Hey, How, man. What, hey, man. Hey, man. I'm, Can you donate your I'm DNA to science? I'm out here, baby. I'm out here. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell you, you wanna tell you the truth? Oh, you got extensions? My, no, no, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> My barber, which is my cousin, he told me in like 2018, yeah. 2019, he was like, yeah, you got about like 200 more cuts left. I said, what? He said, you got about 200 more cuts left. I you said, don't Yo. tell me that while I'm sitting in your chair. I said, bro, we growing this thing. I, I'm going, this is, my, this is my victory lap right here. Yeah. So I don't know how long this is going to last. <laughs> so far, my, my hairline is still intact. My hair ain't thinned out. But I'm like, the day that it does, I'm going to be like, hey, you know, I did it all, baby. I'm good. We're not only here to give them the answers and the mentorship and the guidance and the information so they could be that much more sharper when they're being creative or when they're sitting in a fucking corporate office negotiating a deal with their lawyers and their managers. But... I also want them to know that we love them too. Mm. We're fans of what they doing. We see y'all paying homage and we want y'all to know we paying homage to y'all too. I've seen interviews where there'll be a younger artist that you guys are interviewing that doesn't feel that same kind of love coming Mm. from the OGs. I've been in situations where I've been blessed to have a lot of amazing OGs that to this day, like if I call them for uh, a favor, even if they can't do it, they're going to give me the real answer and not like no right. Hollywood stuff. I have heard so many stories of where it's like, damn, you didn't like the fact that I was making music in a way you didn't agree with. And because of that, you still didn't want to give me no props. What is your viewpoint when you see that? Do you feel like that's accurate? It's two sides of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. You have those artists like Busta, like E-40, like uh, Snoop. I've seen these mm-hmm. artists give younger artists the opportunity. So you have that side and then you have artists that either feel threatened 
don't want to acknowledge or like yeah. you said they're doing a little different it's, it's two sides what do you what do people people pay more attention to they never pay attention to the love they always pay attention to the hate right Damn. the hate just gets more attention and that's i feel like the narrative that gets pushed a lot mm-hmm. right to answer the question i don't i don't like the negative side of it they yeah. both exist. They do. I just want to choose and, and pay more attention to those that are. I just I want to salute the artists that are showing the love. Right. You know what I'm saying? So and for the artists that don't do it, again, I'm the type of person to figure out or want to know why, where that stems from. Mm-hmm. I'm not blessed to kind of pick everybody's brain to figure to out why exactly or why not. The, yeah. Nor nor sometimes do I really care that much. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it might be just some shit that just is in your a personal brain. thing, yeah. Personal thing. Right. So I just salute those that actually do it. And I feel like those are the the artists that need to be highlighted and, and shown it, because yeah. I feel like it then could show the other artists that are on the fence about it like oh damn I see the benefit mm-hmm. this actually revitalizes my career because they might want to sample my music they might want to put me and introduce me to their audience it keeps me young I, look yeah. at E-40 bro I E-40 love it. has I love it. One have of my favorite so rappers because of many that. pivots in his career and yeah. it's like just drop the album having the young homies he always song on just dropped the album exactly. That's, which is what I love because I'm like that inspires me I just want to give you a heads up. Every single December, I take a break from social media and I detox. These videos have already been planned out. They've already been edited and they're going to continue to be up here. Shout out to homie Nishan. He's going to be actually the one responding to you in the comments. I just got to get away. In order for me to give as much as I do to the human beings that I have so much appreciation for, aka the D-D-I-Y. Your friend Curtis must recharge for a full month. And I'm, man, I've been looking forward to this. So I'm probably somewhere in my draws in a VR headset, but I just want to say thank you for continuing to watch this channel we haven't pivoted we've just taken a break i will see you back in january until then back to the video like there's been times where i have had like an og that i was like damn that didn't go according to how i thought it would Mm -hmm. and i low-key kind of got flexed on Mm -hmm. but before i could even like develop a general opinion another og pops up and it's like like for instance i forgot i promise y'all i'm not flexing i'm just so focused on the plan but Chuck D just said, I have one of his favorite hip hop commentary channels. Wow. Earlier this year, I get goosebumps just talking about that. And I had like a brief conversation in the DM. We have been following each other for some time. I had no idea he shared my content on his app. Oh, wow. I signed up and I'm like, nah, there's got to be somebody like posing as him. I just yeah, got yeah, scammed yeah. too. So I was like, it's probably in him. <laughs> to even hear that, and he was telling me how at my age, he was doing the He Got Game soundtrack. To get an OG that's like, he don't know me from a can of paint. Right. For him to be like, Nah, I I rock with what he's saying. I can share that with my pops, and that has significance. Yeah, it's a moment. It means something. You play Fight the Power when I was a kid. Man. You told me don't say Flavor Flav lines, right. but like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mother F him in John Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do hear where Buster's coming from in that I think that responsibility also falls on the younger artists to not prejudge that every artist is stuck in an error or that they want their position. Because I think sometimes you, I've seen dynamics where a younger artist doesn't want to work with them because he doesn't want like, he don't want to get like madonna Wait, wait. So you said a younger artist doesn't, <laughs> doesn't want artist wanna art, doesn't want to work with the older artists because they feel like you're going to take my style. You're going to take got my. It, got I've it, seen got many it. dynamics that yeah. I feel like they're all equally. I understand it's it, valid, but, but, but it's like. Don't hold on to that. We're stuck in this endless loop that feels like it's so much bigger than hip hop. It's so much. It's like a cultural thing sometimes where it's like we're so untrustworthy. But there are scenarios and I feel like Busta Rhymes represents the, the change. Right, right. And where he's like, no, no, I'm going to truly pass the baton. Mm-hmm. But that don't mean if I pass the baton, I'm done. Yeah. It means that you're inspiring me to make sure I stay at the top of my game. That's how Damn I feel sure. when I'm yeah. listening to like I want to be around people that make me want to be better. Right. You have to use that as inspiration and, and anything is going to evolve and change. Right. I was telling you a second ago, I was like, when people ask me what, what I want to do with my career, and with, especially with Homegrown, I want Homegrown to be a part of the media landscape. Whatever that looks like in 10, 15 years. I don't know what that's going to look like. I didn't know in 2005 what podcasts would be or live streaming but or anything like that. curve every time, you know, which is crazy. And, but I think I attribute that to wanting to, being curious and, and want to know what's out there. And, and mm. even now, like, I see all of these platforms that are show Like, at, at the time that we were kind of on, on the hills of, like, showcasing new artists, it wasn't too many platforms. And, and I got to say this while I'm here, man. West Coast Rider, shouts out to Tim Sanchez. Rest in peace. Rest in peace to Tim Sanchez. Very, very, very key figure in West Coast hip hop and, and highlighting a lot of new, new artists. Yeah. And they were one of those platforms, like one of very few platforms at the time that showcased new artists, especially from Los Angeles. Consistently. West Coast, consistently, yeah. right? And when it wasn't cool. So my point is now you have so many platforms that show love to mm-hmm. independent artists and I'm sticking specifically here in LA as well but I yeah. mean just in general and who am I to be like well we were the first ones to do it like yeah. I applaud that I'm like 
that was the if mission it's happening that was the mission That's that was the, the goal mission. so yeah. it's like i feel like older artists should kind of like have that same mentality those that are disgruntled mm-hmm. about the man they're they're keeping the, the 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 mission alive it may not be the way you did it mm-hmm. or it may be mm-hmm. highlight that and support that and that might then extend your legacy and your mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying your art form yeah. it's just a way of just That's looking a good way to at put it, it. In, for sure i didn't even think about that but they are responsible for why that younger artist will be able to still have a lucrative career if they love this exactly. into their 40s and 50s while they're able to do it you better be rooting for this older artist oh this is what my world could look like we can't only use jay-z as one example that, because right. not 98 percent of people are never going to be, be on whole. that right so right. we're not gonna be whole. he is there's only one hole but at the same time if, if people are showing what is possible then we can then get into there a lot more comfortable like these artists get to a level where they're the smartest they ever been, they're the most seasoned they ever been, and we stop hearing from them in terms of the medium that made it easiest for us to understand them. But there's also other avenues and other things like podcasting is, podcasting, is important. Yeah. And I'm in the season of transition of figuring things out, right? Yeah. And one of the things that I came away from the conversation, and even from talking with you and coming here, it's like, it's okay to be in a transitional period. period. Yeah, It's we, okay. We have to normalize that. We have to normalize that. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to look like, this is how I feel right now. Yeah. Let me put that out there because for the next young person that's coming up, that's a great they'll point. see that. They'll be like, man, I saw what Curtis was doing. I saw him at paid dues. I saw the work that he put in there. Yeah. I saw what he when he was about to turn 40, how how he pivoted his career. I saw him walk away from that. That's such a great point because now, now think about the person that has worked in the corporate field their entire life. And at 45, they want to learn the piano. You gonna take and that then away they want to put a project out. You want to take that away from them? Nah, give me them corporate bars. Give me them corporate bars, <laughs> homie. Sometimes people see projects like this as you passing the torch, but what you're actually doing is sharing the flame. Sharing the fucking Ooh. flame. You couldn't have said it better. Ooh, wait a minute, that right there. And I'm going to tell it. So maybe we don't have to ask every artist when they get to a certain age in hip hop to pass the torch, but is it? too much of an ask to ask them to share the flame because they haven't extinguished because I, I ain't putting mm-hmm. the flame out no time soon well, you talk you're about 33 it. years deep and it's still <laughs> you're still selling out the shows and doing the arenas and killing the game and i i'm so excited by this project because for those reasons because you have you have two sort of generations coming together to create the future yeah. and that's what's so exciting and i have to say from this conversation everything you say and understanding the man that Buster is puts so much more meaning into the lyrics, into the album, and the records. Thank so. you. DIY. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.